Tom Loman. I'm going to show you how I make a bowl uh, twist with a twist action on it. Uh, I've made a couple of them previously and I'm doing this a little bit different, not a lot different. You can notice that uh, I have these uh, boards that are around uh, three inches high here and the plan is to get multiple uh, rings out of this before I'm done and I'm going to need six at least and I can get much more than six out of this. We'll see how many I can get but six is the goal. So the boards are around, well this one's about 13 inches. I'm counting on about uh, 12 and a half, 12 and three quarters by the time I'm done. Um, and I'll show you further when I get further. Next, next step here is going to be to glue all these boards together. Right now they're loose and um, there's around 60 or so uh, separate boards here if you count them all. Uh, lots of each, each um, colored wood has a black wingy separator in there. It's about 0 0.05 inches for each <clears throat> wingy separator. So like I said, there's around 60 pieces all together. So, like I say, I'm gonna glue next. Earlier, I uh, am gluing this in sections. I'll have three sec. I think I'm gonna have three sections, maybe four. Um, so I've applied the glue in between each layer here, and um, this is my final one for this section. <clears throat> Nothing magic here. Just putting some glue on both sides, spreading it out, and then I'll clamp. See, I don't have overabundance of glue in there, but it's, it's uh, spread out pretty nicely. Make sure it covers all areas. So uh, that's it for glue in there. Now I'll clamp her up. Make sure that it's nice and tight clamps. Then I'll move on to uh, the next section. Well, I got five sections glued up here. You can tell you need a lot of clamps to do this. I'm uh, just about out of the bigger clamps. I could have probably done one more section, but uh, I stopped there. I'll let that dry up and clean it up, and then I can start putting sections together. All right, so this is the last glue up I have on this project here uh, before I start cutting out the, the panels. I started this project this morning. This is Saturday. I uh, cut all the boards, sanded them all, and now and did several glue ups to get to this final point. End of the day is Saturday, and uh, we'll take the clamps out in the morning, sand it up, and start cutting panels out. All right, so this next day, first day, like I talked about, I uh, cut all the pieces of wood and got them to size, sanded them, got them to size, glued them up. Uh, today it's all dry and together as one chunk so cutting panels will be next uh, this here is like 2.9 and then I got around 12 and a half inch square um, board here so there's a lot of wood here um, so we'll uh, start cutting some panels next it's approximately 2.9 inches thick and I had to cut it down to 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter because my uh, bandsaw is 18 inch and 12 and a quarter is how is maximum amount of height I can cut here. As you can see, it's sitting right below the bearings there. So, all right, so I'm cutting another uh, panel out. I've decided on this one to um, not first cut it on the table saw, but just cut it directly on the bandsaw and see if I can come up pretty straight. Also, I'm cutting across the grain not through the rain, grain, so I think that's helping a little bit too. So, get the bandsaw started to show you for a minute, and then I'll turn it off. So it isn't fast cutting, that's for sure. 
but it seems to be cutting pretty straight. And as you can see, it's uh, at the maximum for my 18 inch uh, jet bandsaw, but it fits. All right, so here I, this is how it's standing and gone. I turned the air off to try to remove some of the noise. Uh, anyway, I'm running through the sanders, but both the panel and the block, and I'll cut the next one. All right, I got all my panels cut up now. Uh, there's nine, I was able to get nine in total. So, and uh, remember we started out with a board that was 2.9 or so. Now, we got her down to 1.55. Um, so, lost half of it. I have nine boards made now. I, I actually sanded them down to a little over 0 0.13 thickness each one, so pretty thin. Um, this will give me a, the shape I want for the bowl. Because I'm, uh, this time I'm going to go with a bowl shaped bowl. Uh, it's going to look like that. Uh, there's a lot of wasted material. So, what I did here was made up a spreadsheet that um, for each board, how much, what size rings I can get out of it. You know, when I do a straight line using the stack lamination, it um, very little waste. With this so because the rings are expanding quickly at the bottom and hardly anything at the top, you need more boards to cut your rings out. So, um, so anyway, I've gone through and um, figured out the ring sizes. Then what I did here for each panel, for each ring, so here's a board that you can see I've, see a little bit maybe, I've gone through and made um, rings or the outline for what I need to cut now. So <clears throat> what I did here is each ring I've numbered them and then some of like this one here, there's a spare in the middle. So maybe I'll get another bowl out of it. I'm not sure. We'll see uh, if there's enough left over to do something like that. Um, so anyway, I got nine of these. I got all my rings. I'm going to end up with, uh, if my plan works, with a total of 36 rings. Uh, I put a traditional um, closed segment base on this thing, and I might put a closed segment top on it. We'll see when we get here. Uh, but first I want to put them together. So what I'm going to do here is I'll drill a little hole on the ring that I want to cut off first. And then I'll use my jigsaw to cut that out. I'll show you how I get started on the jigsaw and I uh, won't bore with cutting out the rings. But uh, basically that's what we're going to do next is drill a hole and cut them out on the jig on the, a scroll saw meant. So all right, so gone ahead and drill a little hole, put my blade in, and uh, now I'm gonna cut. Okay, got that ring. The first, I think it's five of them. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna glue them as a hole here. So then once I do the lathing, I'll just dig into it and clear out what I wanna get rid of. So what I'll be doing here, um, I haven't totally figured out how much of a twist I'm going to have. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So there's with uh, no twist on it. So now I'm going to twist it. And by how much? What I would like, what I like to do here is pick a pick a spot. For instance, see this is lined up with this one here, here, and here. And then I do the same here. This will be lined up with that. So you just pick a spot on your boards and always twist it that much so you get a uniform twist on it. Um, anyway, that's how I do it. So uh, I'll just go one by one. The first five discs, I have the luxury of using the center point here to center it on the base. So you can say the first five are pretty, pretty nice. That way I have a center on um, all of them so okay so now I have put the base on to my face plate waste block and uh, the first thing I need to do is glue my first uh, disc on and so 
uh, make sure the glue is evened out and then press it in just to kind of get a total centering and then what I'll do is I'll let it set for a second or two and uh, then I will uh, put this on there for pressure, even pressure across the whole disc. And uh, that's it for the first one. So what I'm doing here is uh, gluing up in pairs. Uh, I find it a little easier to do it that way. <clears throat> and it also makes the rings, if you, with an offset on it, makes them stronger. So you don't have a tendency to crack. Because you do have a lot of joints there with opportunity for cracking. So, you know, these, I'm still on the discs here, not on the actual rings. I'll be on the actual rings very soon though. This is um, disc four and five right here. So, okay, so this is how it looks after seven rows put on. Um, two sets of two pairs here. We got 12 and 13 in the back and uh, with the red clamps and uh, 14 and 15 rings and with the one up in front here. So I usually do a couple. So this is showing how I glue each ring on. So what I do after every few rows is uh, flip, uh, true it up and um, I'll use this guy quite often here for truing it up nice and flat. Uh, then I run sandpaper across it and obviously you see I've been using this and these is probably replaced at this point. Um, that blood what really uh, fills in the cracks and the sandpaper doesn't last that long. So I just go flat against it like that when it's running. And so this last pair of uh, rings here, what I did is I started going the other way. You can see how I was going this way, and now I'm going to go that way. So started out clockwise, and now I'm going counterclockwise. And all right, so this is with ring 30 on now, getting towards the end. So this is the last pair of uh, rings I'm going to be cutting out. So what I do on the last six, seven of them or so, when they get so flimsy and thin material here, they have a tendency to break apart if you're not careful. So what I do is I uh, glue them together before I cut the outside on it. And you can see the offset there. And once the glue is dry, it's clamped to take the clamps off. And then, um, then I cut the circle after the fact. So, so that's the last uh, pair of rings to glue up. I'll have to cut it like I talked about after I cut the circle out. But uh, let it dry and then I'll cut her out and put her on on there so they're a lot stronger with that twist on them. All right so got all the uh, rings cut out and put in. I'm still gonna put a uh, trim on the top to match the bottom wingy. Uh, other than that though it's all I gotta let it dry now for a bit and then put the top on and then I can start lathing. Okay, so all the rows are on now. I will have to put the trim and wingy I'm gonna put on the top as a trim piece and um, then we'll be done. Put three pieces on so far and um, this is actually my open segment jig but I use it for both open and close now. putting 48 segments around the ring here for a trim piece. I had this wood cut for a different open segment project, so just using it for the top, seeing as I already had it all cut up and made, so it's pretty easy. So all I do is keep on going around, putting piece after piece.
type of bowl you got a lot of sand into. I've laid it, now I'm sanding. So after four hours of sanding, I'm ready to cut it off the lathe here. Got the bowl look to it.